Uh, how's their week begun, Stephen? Yes, I will start. The European shares just actually shutting slightly into the red at the open uh, here in Europe. In London, shares in Lloyds Bank are down over 3% after it announced it's putting aside uh, 2.4 billion euros more to cover claims of mis-selling payment protection insurance. Here in France, new car sales for January, new figures out this morning showing they were up 0.5% in January. Slightly good news, not good enough to push Renault's shares too high up there, just up 0.3% in Paris. Over in Asia, China and New Year holidays meant there was no training in, tra- trading excuse me, in Shanghai or Shanghai, Shanghai or Hong Kong. Probably no training either, actually, come to think of it. <laughs> uh, the Nikkei back in business today, though, after its closed days, down nearly 2% on the back of disappointing corporate results in the United States. Over in Seoul, the Kospi down over 1%, this, the continuing fears over emerging markets. And just to check in on Thailand as well after those elections, shares actually opening in the positive today, up over 1%. Now, next, a group of uh, French company bosses. They've gone in search of uh, new business opportunities, uh, gone somewhere rather different, Iran, for this one. Yeah, around 100 French companies involved in this business delegation. It's actually the biggest uh, push by Western business interests into Iran in a decade. Now, the three-day visit comes after President Rouhani's speech to the World Economic Forum less than two weeks ago, in which he said Iran was open for business and said that he saw the, companies, the, the country's economy rather uh, as alongside those other emerging economies. Now, amongst the companies who are on this delegation, the oil company Total, uh, the mobile network, uh, op- excuse me, the mobile, operator Orange and also the two French car makers Peugeot, Citroën and Renault uh, both of whom lost out heavily uh, on those sanctions in Iran. Renault uh, estimated it cost their business 500 million euros. Uh, let's listen to what their chief executive told us uh, after, those, after that speech by President Hassan Rouhani. We think that Iran is a, is a great market. We want to contribute to the development of this market. Even with all the sanctions, this market reach a level of 600 to 700,000 cars a year, which makes it, uh, even in these dramatic conditions, the largest market in the Middle East. Now, it's hard to uh, remember life without it, really, but Facebook is um, 10 years old this week. I would have thought it was more than that. It feels like it's been around a lot longer because it's such a major part of our life, sad as that might be. (laughs) 1.2 billion regular users of Facebook and the company earned a staggering $7.9 billion mm-hmm. uh, last year. Now, the company's shares were driven to a record high, uh, over, over over $62 after those uh, stellar results. But things can change fast online, as we know, and some people are casting doubt already over Facebook's future. Charlotte Hawkins has more. Over the last 10 years, it's become a must for internet users. 1.23 billion active users spend an average of eight hours per month on Facebook. I like that everybody uses it, so I always know where to find friends. I post about my daughter, um, get in touch with my family who lives abroad. A decade on from its launch, Facebook is currently worth over $150 billion, and its shares hit a record high last week. It's still the most liked social network, but it's facing fierce competition. The number of teenagers using the site dropped by 25% in the last three years. Teens do seem to prefer Instagram, Snapchat and other networks to Facebook. Teens are on Facebook, but they're not as engaged and enthusiastic uh, about Facebook as they are about other networks. So that is an ongoing challenge for them. So far, Facebook has proved resilient. In 2012, shares were hit by fears Facebook wasn't making enough money from mobile usage which now accounts for 73% of its daily users. But rising to the challenge, Facebook announced last week that 55% of its revenue now comes from advertising on mobiles. And it's growing. For now, Facebook remains one of the world's most profitable tech companies. Last year, it made $1.5 billion. Time now for a quick look at some of the day's company's news and two board members at Porsche are facing a 1.8 billion euro lawsuit over the company's failed bids for Volkswagen. Seven hedge funds have accused the company chairman Wolfgang Porsche and Ferdinand Piech of misleading the market over its plans to buy the German car maker. The company has denied any wrongdoing. The low-cost airline Ryanair has reported losses of 35 million euros for the last three months of 2013. The company's earnings were hit by a 9% fall in average fares, slashed in a bid to attract more passengers. Chief Executive Michael O'Leary says despite the loss, the company is on track to earn around 500 million euros for the year. Shares in the airline up around 6% in trading in London today. 
And the troubled Spanish lender Bankia has reported profits of more than 500 million euros for last year. This after its loss of 19 billion in 2012. Bankia was forced to close more than 1,000 branches and cut 5,400 employees as part of a massive restructuring plan to save it from collapse. Shares in Madrid and the bank up around 2% today. Now, finally, it is uh, the most expensive television uh, advertising event of the year. But how effective are those multi-million dollar Super Bowl slots? Stephen has the answer for us. Not very, it would appear. This, according to research uh, from the advertising research firm Communicus, uh, they surveyed more than a thousand consumers before and after last year's Super Bowl, after they'd watched those extremely expensive ads, uh, like this one selling a bear, apparently. <laughs> selling um, a bear. It found that just one in five of those consumers were persuaded to buy the products they'd seen advertised, despite the ads costing advertisers up to $4 million for just 30 seconds. That's put a lot of companies' uh, minds at, uh, perhaps uh, unsettles them a little bit. Some brands yeah. have opted out from this year's Super Bowl, including Subway, the sandwich chain. They're going to focus their advertising spend on the Winter Olympics instead. They're getting the advertising from you instead, Stephen. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Buy a bear, watch the Super Bowl. Stephen Carroll with uh, Business. Nick's here with the uh, papers as well, the international ones this time. It's starting out uh, with news from